Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. The Supreme Court is about to hear a case involving prayer at public assemblies. It'll be a major case that could affect not only prayer at local town meetings, but also the entire Establishment Clause. I am Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. Matt, this case is called the Town of Greece versus Galloway. It involves a prayer at public assemblies, and it is involving a situation coming out of New York where, in fact, the town council opens up the event with prayer. And the Federal Court of Appeals ultimately ruled that that was unconstitutional, thus placing it in conflict with other courts, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals down in the southern, southeastern part of the United States, and even the 9th Circuit Court of Appeals out in the western part of the states had ruled that prayer at these public assemblies was permissible. This one disagreed with it, and the Supreme Court decided to jump into this fray and take up this major case. Well, Linda Stevens, one of the challengers uh, in the case, told NBC, quote, I don't think you should have to endure religious indoctrination in order to participate in your own town government. Well, of course, to the left, to the uh, church-state separationists, any public expression of, of particularly Christian faith, uh, they consider that indoctrination. And so they want to, to have a complete in religious cleansing across the board. Well, Miss uh, uh, Stevens' position here it does not track. It, it is not uh, in keeping with our rich history, nor is it in keeping with our, the, the First Amendment. Uh, we have a long history of opening up uh, Congress, opening up uh, assembly meetings across the country in prayer, uh, and, and frequently in, with a Christian prayer. So she just doesn't have the law, nor does she have history on her side. Well, and that doesn't ever stop them because they ultimately want to bring these kinds of cases to literally, literally eliminate a religion, particularly Christian viewpoints and expression from the public square. If you go back to a case in 1983 out of Nebraska, the issue was whether or not it was constitutional to have prayer before the state legislature. And the Supreme Court ultimately in the Marsh case, Marsh versus Chambers, said that it was. And the reason why it was, they said, is that if you go back to the original drafting of the First Amendment, uh, they had prayer that even predated the First Amendment with the uh, members of the Continental Congress. And then the very people who drafted the First Amendment as their first legislative act authorized a chaplain to be paid by the federal treasury to open up every session of Congress with prayer. And even today, every single Congress a meeting, congressional meeting, is open with prayer. So how could you say that the First Amendment would ban prayer when it predated the First Amendment and those that drafted the First Amendment actually authorized prayer before their deliberative bodies? So the Supreme Court ultimately said, historically, it's no question the First Amendment was not designed to eliminate this kind of prayer. Well, and, and it, it goes even a little deeper. Our, consta, our very Constitution, our very First Amendment, was birthed from prayer. Uh, you'll recall uh, the accounts of during the uh, first Constitutional Convention, they had reached an impasse. They're trying to, to get everyone to come on board with a, you know, a, a Constitution that everyone can, can live by and agree with. They had reached an utter imp impasse, and it was Benjamin Franklin, who's often cited as the great uh, you know, anti-theist by, by leftists, who stood up and, and said, look, I, I know now, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, that we know that uh, it's clear that God governs in the affairs of man, uh, men. We're not going to get this done unless we pray. They broke. They had a time of prayer and fasting so the, the, our very Constitution that we're talking about here and that the Supreme Court will be looking at here in, term, in the context of this was birthed, was birthed from no prayer. That's a historical fact. There is no denying it. was going to fall apart, but for Benjamin Franklin standing up and imploring people to, every time they get together from henceforth to pray, they convened this uh, lengthy uh, prayer meeting 
and then came back a few days later, and then a few weeks, five or so weeks later, ultimately the Constitution was born. But that was the turning point, and it was birthed in prayer. And now, from 1983 to the present, what we have is a Supreme Court decision that clearly looks at the original intent, amazingly. Uh, it's one of those few cases that <laughs> looks at the original intent of the Constitution. But then there's been challenges at the lower level. So you've got the legislative level, and certainly we know that Congress would fall in the same category. But what about these uh, local county, school board, or city council kind of meetings? Prayer is there on the local level, and it's the same kind of local deliberation that you have at the state or national level. Well, that's where the courts have ultimately split. Some courts have used the Marsh case, looking at history, Others have used a convoluted test that the Supreme Court has developed called the Lemon Test from a case called Lemon versus Kurtzman, and ultimately they've split, and that's where this split has ultimately come about. Some people, some courts have said it's the same thing for the local uh, prayer as it is for the statewide prayer at the legislature, and other courts have said, no, no, it's a little bit different, and consequently that's where we are. So here's what's before the United States Supreme Court. Prayer at these local levels, which would be your city, your county, which could include your school board, is that going to be upheld by the Constitution? The fact that the lower court struck it down and the Supreme Court took it is a good sign that they don't agree with it. But we just don't know. You never know about this court. The other thing is this, and this is the bigger uh, implication of this case, is will the court do away with some of this convoluted church-state rules that they've ultimately created through these tests and go back to more of a historical analysis? If they did that, that would be a major step forward for religious liberty. Well, those who are, who are uh, opposing uh, the prayer in this regard, they're, they're just not uh, tracking with history. They are historical revisionists. If uh, you know, if the federal government certainly the, the legislature can open can open prayer, they they used to have church in Congress on Sunday. I mean, they would you know the ACLU would lose its noodle today if we had church actually held a church service mm -hmm. in Congress. Our founders did that, uh, but it's more ridiculous. To and say. they actually had these uh, legislative meetings held in churches. In churches. So we had church in, you know, the biggest church in the country at the time of the founding was actually in Congress. Yeah. And uh, who was one of the frequent attenders? President Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. That's uh, a Christian church. We're not, we're, it, yeah. And, and then, of course, uh, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, the first legislative deliberations were held in churches. Yeah. So... This whole idea of the separation of church and state, obviously what it is designed and its intent to do is to keep the government out of dictating to churches what they have to do and to prohibit the federal government from establishing a national religion, a national denomination, but not to have this cleansing that we see uh, where religion and particularly Christian viewpoints and prayers are just simply booted from the public square. Well, we have reality, we have the facts, we have history, we have the Constitution on our side, but in an age where the law and reality and the facts and the Constitution don't matter, everything's up for grabs. So if, if it's ridiculous to say at a federal level uh, that uh, you know we can't prohibit prayer, it's even more ridiculous at the state and municipal level when we, even today, all 50 state constitutions expressly recognize the benefits that our, our divine God, our creator of the universe, has bestowed upon the, the people. Uh, I w wrote an article once showing that all 50 state constitutions recognize God, call for prayer, ask for God's continued blessing. So it's just an absurd argument that we have here, but nonetheless, it's at the Supreme Court, and we still have to stand firm to fight for our constitutional and God-given rights. Well, Liberty Council filed an amicus brief in this case overviewing the history of uh, these issues and, and uh, the religious liberty and the prayer and the religious heritage that really undergird this history, and also urging the Supreme Court to overturn some of its previous convoluted rules that it has established that no one seems to agree on at the United States Supreme Court and that a majority of justices have soundly criticized. So I continue to pray for this case. It's called Town of Greece versus Galloway. Not only that uh, we have a clear ruling that you can have prayer at these uh, deliberative events, but also that the Supreme Court does away with some of this convoluted history and gets back more to an original understanding 
of the Constitution, particularly the First Amendment. Go to Liberty Council's website, lc.org. Remember to continue to pray for this ministry and support it financially. You can do so by going to lc.org, make an online credit card contribution to help support this ministry. On this and many other cases, all of these cases we do at no cost, pro bono to all of those that we serve. We can't do that without your prayers and particularly without your financial support. You can also get more information from the website or call 800-671-1776 to ask how you can be involved and how you can also financially support this ministry. Go to lc.org for more information. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.